17th regular meeting of the Common Council to order. Pat, would you call the roll, please? Corbs present, Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that the um, minutes of the November 17th med meeting and the minutes from the special meeting on uh, November 20th and 24th that they be um, approved as entered in the record. We got a motion before us to approve the minutes of the past council meeting the special meetings. Stand approved. Under discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Excuse me. I sound worse than I feel tonight. Believe me. We have a group of veterans with us tonight. Would you please lead us in a pledge of allegiance? No, I'm done now. <laughs> <clears throat> Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This evening we have a presentation by the veterans. Please, would you please step up to the mic? Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the council. The limp is not a war wound, it's from trying to run farther and faster than you ever thought you could in your life and can't. <laughs> The County Veterans Service Officers Association of Wisconsin annually solicits nominations for its Veterans Advocacy Award. The nominee need not be a veteran. However, the nominee must have provided outstanding service to veterans and their families and must have demonstrated a high degree of compassion for their constituents. For her efforts to organize as part of the Korean War 50th year commemoration, a ceremony to remember the Korean War veterans from the city of Sheboygan, the County Veterans Service Officers Association of Wisconsin is honored to present our 2003 Veterans Adv Advocacy Award to Mrs. Ingrid Weniger. Got to have you got this got the spirit of the lake in the background. Thank you. We have one hearing this evening and that's to amend the zoning of property at 1106 North 9th Street. Anyone wishing to be heard on a hearing? Sir, please step up the microphone. Good evening, I've not done this before, so um, I, I do bring a visual aid tonight. Um, the, the property in question is the, excuse me, is the, um, the shaded area right in here, and um, our thoughts. Are, okay, thank you. Our thoughts are that the the uh, Erie Avenue has is now growing to be a a, a big commercial uh, corridor into the city, with lots of uh, commercial and business opportunities along that way. There's one. Um, again, this is the property in question. This is. Uh, a uh, business which is the body shop it's on the same block and then um, this whole avenue north north ninth street also is um, is a, a commercial um, corridor as well we believe to the east and to the south is uh, commercial we're asking that consideration be given to this 
this property, we have a, um, a business that is interested in, in um, owning that property for uh, counseling service. I'm sorry, it's Tom, Tom Faley, F-A-L-E-Y. And um, I'm actually, my residence is in Plymouth, Wisconsin, 234 Caroline Street. Mm -hmm. And are there any questions that I can answer? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Move the hearings to be closed. Uh, this was brought in at the last regular meeting. If I submit the following appointment for your consideration, Betty Moody to be considered for the library board to fill the unexpired term of William Wangaman, which expires April 30, 2006, signed by the mayor. That can be confirmed. Hold on, McGough. And I move that your appointment be confirmed. Second. Moved and seconded the appointment be confirmed under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. And uh, brought in for tonight, hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration to the Quality of Life Services Advisory Committee. Cynthia Hare, Richard Meyer, Roy Ramos, Peter Berensprung, Song Yang, Ronald Erline, Ronald Beenan, and Alan Kretschmar. All terms expiring uh, December 31st, 2004, signed by the mayor. And that will lie over. All public forum. Excuse me. Okay. Um, Thank you. Susan Hunley. <coughs> Susan Hunley, 632 Michigan Avenue. Uh, um, the intent of the room tax legislation, I'm just going to make five quick points. I probably should have started with that. The first one is the intent of the room tax legislation. It's promotion and development of tourism. This is exactly what Wisconsin, I'm sorry, Wisconsin room ta tax statute 66.0615 states, it is that simple. This legislation was passed to help communities throughout Wisconsin to generate revenue from overnight travelers and to then further help promote and develop tourism within those communities. It is a wonderful way to help communities attract tourists without having local dollars spent to do it. The Su Sunday Press editorial opinion column stated that tourism is the state's second largest industry and is the fastest growing one. It's vital to the city's future. I could not agree more with that statement. It has been stated many times at this public forum by myself and Denny Moyer, our CVB director for the Sheboygan County of Commerce, that for every dollar a community spends on attractive tourism, more than 700 is returned to that community. The statistic comes from the Wisconsin Department of Tourism. How does our community benefit from tourism? Many ways. First, it creates businesses, which in turn creates jobs. When I moved to Sheboygan seven years ago, it was for one reason, to start my bed and breakfast. I did not buy an, an existing business, rather I started a new business. This created new jobs for the community. When an overnight guest comes to Sheboygan and stays at my bed and breakfast, or at any of the other lodging establishments in Sheboygan, they spend money at many other local businesses. They eat in the restaurants, they shop in the stores, they go charter fishing, golfing, or many of the other recreational activities that add income to these local businesses. This in turn creates more demand 
for these types of businesses, which in turn creates more jobs, thus contributing to a stronger economic base for our community. Again, this is done by tourists spending money in our community. The key is to get tourists to come to Sheboygan. There are many communities competing for tourists in Wisconsin, the Dells and Door County, to name a few. This is why it is crucial for Sheboygan to use room tax revenue for promotion and development. Sheboygan cannot remain the best kept secret in the Midwest. The reason I keep using that phrase, so many of my guests have said that to me as they depart my establishment. We must spend as much money as possible to get tourists to our city. If the CB, CBB can do a good job now with the funding it now receives from room tax, just imagine what it could do with all the money it is entitled to. I can see it now. Eight-page glossy ads in Midwest Living, television and radio ads airing to the Chicago market, and the list goes on. The point I'm trying to make it is, that, is that it is coming down to the zero hour regarding the notice of claim filed by myself and Renee Susha. When this notice was denied by the city, we were left with only one option, to sue the city within six months of the denial. The last thing Renee and I want to do is this, but we are being forced into litigation over the misuse of room tax dollars in Sheboygan because the city has given us no other option. Please remember this when future events occur regarding this matter. If I could, I'll answer any questions or clarifications. So then, so this is going to get me beat back and forth. So right. Thank I you just for speaking. didn't know if, okay. if I wasn't clear on. That's fine. I stumbled over some words. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <coughs> Renee Susha. <coughs> Renee Susha, 303 St. Clair Avenue, Sheboygan. I'd like to clarify um, that the Sheboygan Citizen Action Group welcomes Blue Harbor to the community and that the ethics charges that were filed relate to the issue that the process wasn't followed. The complaint that was filed states that on behalf of the Sheboygan Citizens Action Group, we are filing a complaint that the city attorney and Mayor Schramm have violated the Sheboygan Code of Ethics. One example of their gross dereliction of duties is when they ignored resolution number 130304, which authorized the contracting for outside legal services. The resolution clearly states that the proper city officials are hereby authorized to enter into contract with Quarles and Brady for providing outside legal assistance at the cost not to exceed $120,000. The mayor and city attorney did not enter into a contract with Quarles and Brady after this resolution was passed. On August 27th, Quarles and Brady submitted a bill for over $355,000. According to the municipal code, public <laughs> officials and employees are agents of public purpose and hold office for the benefit of the public. They are bound to observe in their official acts the highest standards of morality and to discharge faithfully the duties of their office, regardless of personal consideration, recognizing that the public interest must be their primary concern. When you look at the municipal code under uh, the definition of what an ethics board is, uh, it says that administration and civil enforcement of this article is vested in an ethics board consisting of all of the aldermen. The chairman of the council committee of the whole shall serve as chairman of the ethics board. The board may issue subpoenas, administer oaths, and investigate any violation of this article on its own motion or upon complaint by any person. Any member who is himself the subject of investigation by the board for any violation of this article shall be excused from participation as a board member in such an investigation. The ethics charge were filed because the process wasn't followed. There's nothing in the complaint about the Blue Harbor contract or the time that Quarles and Brady spent on working on the contract. It's all about how this governing body isn't necessarily following the rules. For example, let's reflect upon the process that was followed during the last council meeting when the ethics charge was mentioned. As soon as the ethics charge was mentioned, a motion was made to file it. This was followed by a motion to refer the charge to the ethics board. Mayor Schramm was quick to incorrectly state that filing of the ethics charge against him takes precedence to referral to the charge or 
to referral of the charge to the ethics board. Filing did not take precedence to the referral. Once again, the process wasn't followed. Secondly, two aldermen said the complaint was frivolous. If the process was followed, they should have been part of the ethics board that would determine the fate of the accused. Reaching an innocent verdict prior to investigating the complaint and meeting as the ethics board isn't following the process. Third, having the mayor dictate that an independent group be formed to investigate the charges was inappropriate. This council is shirking their responsibilities by not taking this count, this count seriously. Lastly, I would like to know if Mr. T. Winkle, the dictated chairman of the committee, would ever allow a plaintiff to be on a jury. It was inappropri inappropriate for Alderman Warner to appoint the person who filed the ethics complaint to the investigating committee. The process that would have been followed in the real world would have been to allow this person or someone from within the Citizens Action Group to present their facts to the committee, not serve as a member on the committee. In closing, I would say that this council had their opportunity to act on the ethics charges. Oddly enough, I'm confident that justice will prevail in the end. I honestly don't think this investigative committee has any idea how much their integrity is going to be challenged with this project. Jamie Schramm. Jamie Schramm, 1227 North 29th Street. Good evening. I once again wish to thank you for allowing me to speak and for sharing your time. I would like to share with you a statement which was written in 1894 by the UW Board of Regents. Their thoughts are enshrined in a plaque which now hangs at the entrance to UW Sheboygan, a special place in our community which I'm proud to be part of. And it serves as a reminder of our purpose and the potential we all hold. Whatever may be the limitations which trammel inquiry elsewhere, we believe that the great state University of Wisconsin should ever encourage that continual and fearless sifting and winnowing by which alone the truth can be found. Truth. Truth is what sets us as humans apart from the lesser of God's creation. It is the understanding of fact versus fiction, right versus wrong. Truth does not seek power or attention and is not concerned with being first or last. Without the truth, without the pursuit of understanding and of knowledge, we are left to merely attack, lash out, and react to our world. Truth welcomes commentary and feedback, is threatened by none, and yet still remains true to its core. While we all hold our individual opinions, the truth validates those which represent fact, reality, and our life's experience. None of us is an expert in the truth, and it is the cause of much debate. However, if we remain true to each other, our community, and our vision, the truth will lead. My comments this evening are not related to any specific item on your agenda, and perhaps they should be. However, all of us collectively mustn't abandon our commitment to seek the truth wherever it resides and with whomever speaks its message. Thank you. Before we continue, I want to make it clear. When I call you your name for consent or for the public forum, you don't have to give your name again and your address. That's not what we require. Just get up and speak. Otherwise, you're taking time away from your time. Jerry Winninger. I'd like to say good evening to the Honorable Mayor, James Fram, and the City Council. I'm here tonight as a veteran and as a former state commander of the Veterans of Foreign Wars of Wisconsin. As a veteran, I want to offer my thanks to our mayor and the counselor for your outstanding support to our veterans in Sheboygan. Under the leadership of Mayor Schramm, Sheboygan has demonstrated time and time again that it honors its veterans. Sheboygan is the only city to host a Korean War commemoration in which 39 veterans were awarded the Korean Memorial Medal, which was long overdue for recognition of these Korean veterans. It was made possible through the hard work of Alder Person Ingrid Winninger, who chaired this event, and Mayor Schramp, who was unwavering support, was critical. This is only one recent example of Mayor Schramp's support of veterans. I would like to list his help in restoring another monument over on Geely Avenue and Calment Road 
which Bill Wagerman brought up, and we, and the mayor was there. This monument was put there in 1930, and people had forgotten who those people were, and there was several aldermen here that were there at that, and I want to thank you for you being the chaplain, Councilman Manning. As, and also, as, help, as the mayor helped me during my tour as state commander to VFW and many other events, he lent his support and presence too. But suffice it to say that veterans in this city know they have a friend in the mayor's office. Mayor Schramm's support of veterans also extends to our troops that are currently in arms way. It was not that long ago that we had to support their troops rally at the armory. All veterans organizations were present, as were our firefighters, as were our police officers, and many wonderful citizens. And of course, our mayor was there, standing with us and showing his support again, and many thanks, Mayor Shrek. Jerry, five minutes are up already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> D. Olson. <coughs> Good evening, members of the council. I'm Dee Olson, executive director for the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce. It's been made aware that, to me recently that the contract between the city and the chamber was brought up during a public forum segment at a prior common council meeting, at which it was declared the contract between the city of Sheboygan and the Sheboygan County Chamber of Commerce and Convention Visitors Bureau was reported to be illegal. The Chamber does not wish to leave that accusation unanswered. The Chamber believes the contract is, in fact, legal. Actually, the City and the Chamber has a long-standing history of a room tax contractual agreement created for the purpose of having the Chamber and the CVB serve to do the marketing to tourists who may consider Sheboygan as a destination. The current room tax contract is an extension of our contractual relationship with the city, with the original contract being signed in 1983, represented then by city leaders Gary Langhoff, Richard Gebhardt, Lawrence Felton, and Mayor Richard Susha. Until recently, this agreement has never been challenged. Many communities across the state of Wisconsin operating under the same state statute, 66.015, have similar agreements between the municipality and the recognized tourism promotion entity. Neither the chamber nor the city attorney are aware of anything that prevents the parties from contracting for such services. Sheboygan is not an exception to the rule, but rather the rule. And it makes sense in light of the tourism development we have seen. Many communities engage in these types of contracts to ensure professional marketing is done. No other community has been legally challenged, and Sheboygan is being made to serve as the test case. To my knowledge, State Statute 66.015 doesn't say any municipality cannot do this. By statute, the municipality has options. Subcontracting for service is one such option, and it is very common between municipalities and chambers and or CVBs across the state of Wisconsin. By contracting for services, the city has not abdicated their responsibility to spend the tourism dollars as intended by the legislation. A city has the right to determine whether they want to contract services for many areas of city government. In doing so, the city's interests are protected with the contractual controls and oversight, as is the case in the agreement between the city of Sheboygan and the Common Council. Clearly, it begs common sense that this contractual relationship is in order. The chamber, like the city, believes the contract is legal or we wouldn't have engaged it. Thank you.
Okay. Alderman McGraw. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, regarding the consent agenda, before I, I start that, I just want to make mention of one thing. Um, just for Ms. Hanley, when she was speaking uh, this evening, uh, a document is coming from the um, Finance Committee. Um, it happens to lie over tonight, but it's moving an extra 85000 or an additional $85,000 of room tax that we collected during 2003 to the chamber to use for creating more tourism and using those dollars for that. Um, just to, to make everybody aware of that, that our system is working. The, um, the contract that we have with the chamber is working. <clears throat> and then also, before I start that, um, uh, the City of Sheboygan Common Council members did receive a thank you card um, for your kindness and sympathy. When times are hard to bear, we thank you for the comfort that comes from those who share the family of Harlan Schramm. So this was a card that we received because we did send um, flowers. Uh, thank, you. To, thank you. That being said, um, I would make a motion that... Um, for the consent agenda, which is 17-1 through 17-15, that all ROs be accepted and filed, that all RCs be accepted and adopted, that we pass all resolutions and general ordinances. It's been moved and seconded. All ROs be accepted and filed. RCs be accepted and adopted. Resolutions and ordinances will be put upon your passage, except 17-4 will go to finance. And 17.5 from the Festival of Trees, that will go to Public Works. We refer to Public Works for discussion. Okay, under discussion. Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to refer 17.11 back to finance, please. Thank you. Mike did. <laughs> motion before us to refer 17.11 back to finance. Under discussion on 17.11, was that yours also? Alderman Stefan, okay. Um, better stand up. Uh, I guess I, I kind of think I know why they want to refer it back, because I, actually I think it was my fault when I made the motion in committee. We were talking about two weeks, and I was thinking the 15th would be two weeks, and I don't know if that's what you guys are understanding. That's why you want it back in the committee, just because we have no way of knowing if this, is, this agreement is going to be. I mean, it was our intention, I think, in committee that we would know by the time tonight came, thinking tonight was next week, at least I did, that we would have the... the data from Mr. Capitillo within the city planning department, is that the reason we're sending it back? Then I have no problem with it. Alderman Perez. Thank you, Your Honor. I guess uh, um, Alderman Stefan answered a little bit of my question, but I was, wanted to ask uh, Alderman Bonet the reason uh, for uh, referring it back to committee. Alderman Bonet. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, that is part of it, and I, we had not, I had spoken to the city attorney and to the city um, planning department, and there had not been action taken on it, with, and also with the fact that the deadline we set here is December 8th versus December 15th, I felt it was better to have it back in committee until we had more results to show concerning the situation. Thank you. Thank you. There's no other discussion on that one. All in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Motion carried. Okay, Alderman Stefan. Um, I don't want a separate vote on it, but I think it's an important informational item. Um, under 17.8, where the Finance uh, Committee is filing a bunch of documents, um, the first one is a notification from the city clerk that uh, Charter Communications is notifying us of their intent to renew the cable television. And, you know, at first it sounds pretty cut and dry, it's no big deal, but I, I guess Mike Hutz is here and I'd just like him to run through, you know, what he told us at committee just so we know that that is kind of a a monumental undertaking that we're about to go through and just so everybody's got, got it in the back of their mind that it's going to happen. So I don't wonder if Mike could just take a minute and explain it to us like he did in committee. Thank you. And like I said, I don't need a separate vote. I just thought it was for information. Didn't anticipate that, Bill. Uh, 1981 was when uh, Sheboygan uh, <laughs> received its first cable contract. That was with Lakeside Cablevision. Since that time, system has been sold a couple times, Marcus Cable, um, Star Cable Vision, and, and now Charter. Uh, the initial contract in 81 was a 15-year agreement which ran to uh, 1996. Uh, at that time, we refranchised with then, uh, uh, let's see, it would have been Star, which was brought out, purchased by uh, 
Lakeside Cablevision. The entire process is a, is a multi-year multi process. Under the contract agreement, uh, Charter was required to inform us up to three years uh, ahead of time, ahead of the contract renewal date, which is in 2006, of their intent to refranchise with us. Under federal law, we are required to uh, uh, quite a few things we actually have to do. It's best if we uh, have an outside consultant work with us, as we did in, in 1986. Uh, we'll have numerous uh, community sessions with governmental groups, nonprofits, churches, uh, churches, a variety of organizations seeking their input into the process, as well as our uh, educational institutions. Have, we must determine our needs for channel capabilities as well as Lakeshore Technical College, uh, Sheboygan Area School District, and UW Sheboygan, as well as review the entire franchise agreement, which I believe is about a 60 or, or 70 page document. So Charter's letter to us was the initial, I guess the, through the initial stone, the ball is in our court now to inform them we'll be willing to start negotiations. Uh, I believe, Steve, I think we're required by federal law to begin something within six months of that. Uh, right, I think we've got to, uh, I didn't bring my notes with me, because, uh, but we've got to uh, indicate that we're going to uh, do a needs assessment or something like that within the next six months. But uh, Mike is correct, this, this starts the formal process uh, towards refranchise. If the city did nothing in response to this letter, after six months, uh, they'd be entitled to, to uh, automatic renewal of the contract when it expired. So uh, uh, there is a process to be followed. It's kind of lengthy and cumbersome. And, uh, this is the start of it. Ten years ago, as part of this for your information, ten years ago as part of, as part of the process, uh, at that time, we still had the newsletter that went out to every home, I believe, on a quarterly or biannual basis. We included about a half dozen page questionnaire, which went out to every home in Sheboygan, uh, seeking each taxpayer's input into the process and what they determined their needs to be, too. And I would assume that to be part of the process also. It has been used in, in cities that have recently uh, refranchised Oshkosh and Stevens Point, to name a few. So it will be a lengthy process, and we will be seeking input from all our citizens. Hang on a minute, Mike. Alderman Louie, question. Uh, thank you, Honor. Um, I don't watch council meetings very often on TV. I don't, I don't like to see myself on TV. But um, when I do, I notice the quality of the council meetings, the, the filming uh, is pretty poor. Is anything going to be done about that? What I hear, not to chastise the alderman, but I suppose this is my opportunity, what I hear <laughs> most often uh, is the quality of audio. And it's not our system, which is bad. We've had it checked out independently by, by several people, as well as our radio technician for the police department, who is top notch. And the problem is uh, you've got to use the system as it's presented. Uh, if, if you don't have it pinned to your lapel, or if you do have it pinned to your, your lapel, speak in that direction. Don't be speaking in the opposite direction. If you're holding it, speak into it. Don't be talking over here. You can tell the difference just when I speak away from the microphone. So that's the, that's the complaint I've heard most often, Alderman Moody. Uh, is the, the picture the, quality has been bad, too, from time to time. That is, uh, okay, we will address that. Uh, we don't have the line which runs to UW Sheboygan and uh, TV8 is not fiber optic. Okay, so can that be done? That will be part of our requests uh, okay. in, in the refranchising process. It has caused a lot of problems, I agree with you, with the mm -hmm. picture quality and especially with, with outages. I know UWS has had problems with their station as a result of that too, and I think Alderman Perez can attest to okay. that. So. I'm certain UWS will be making that request as well as City of Sheboygan. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, if there's another discussion, Pat, would you call the roll? Bird? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemere? Aye.
Moody? Aye. Aye. Lynn Fleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderbilt? Aye. Longerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Winninger? Aye. Fallman? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. Seven. All in order? I thank your honor. I'd like to pull 1629 forward if I may. 1629. Okay. On that, your honor, I would make a motion to accept and file the report of officer and to pass the attached ordinance. Second. Move to second that we accept and file our own pass to resolution under ordinance. ordinance, excuse me, under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor, uh, this is relative to rezoning the property located at 1106 North 9th Street from Class UR Urban Residential to Class CC Central Commercial Classification. Uh, this is the property on the northwest corner of North 9th Street, any area know that the gentleman was up here earlier for. And the Plan Commission believes this is a good use of the property and that it fits uh, with the comprehensive plan of the City of Sheboygan and recommends approval on that. Thank you. <laughs> Another discussion, Pat, would you call the roll? Bonnet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Monty Mayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wongelman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Wenninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. 1716 through 1719 to be referred. 1720 will lie over. 1721 through 24 lies over. 1725 through 33 to be referred. 1734 by public protection and safety. Recommending denying taxi cab driver's license 6245 based on his danger to public safety and his inability to conform to the rules of the law. Alderman, here to be. Doyle. Doyle. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept and adopt the report of committee. Move to second. Is Mr. Deeks here committee. tonight to speak in his own behalf? No, Your Honor. We can proceed. <clears throat> Is there any discussion? Hearing none, you call the roll. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Longerman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. 1733, 35 through 37 will lie over. 1738 to be referred. 1641, a resolution by Alderman Van Akron, Wangaman, Winninger, and Manny, accept a letter of understanding with Local 5011, Union of Professional Employees, authorizing the Collective Bargaining Committee and the Chairman of the Committee of Salary and Grievance to sign the letter of understanding. Alderman Van Akron. Your Honor, I move the resolution be put upon its passage. <coughs> Moved and second, the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. Hearing none, what do you call the roll? Graf. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weininger? <coughs> Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonnet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carried. 1644, RC by Public Protection and Safety recommending filing documents submitting a communication from Stock Scott Bartz requesting a no parking and alley sign in his alley. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. I make a motion to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the attached ordinance. Second. Move to second to accept and adopt the report of committee and pass the ordinance under discussion. Under discussion, your honor, this is in regard to a communication from Scott Bartz requesting a no parking and alley sign in his alley. Uh, the alley in question is an east-west alley from the 1300 block of North 17th Street west to North 18th Street. This change would allow parking only on one side of the alley that being the north side. Uh, this was discussed at public protection and safety meeting and the traffic department with the police department as well as the fire department uh, checked out the area and under their advice, uh, the committee believes it's the best thing to do for that alley to get emergency vehicle access to it and it also helps out the residents. 
If there's no other discussion, you call the roll. Manny? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1651. General Ordinance by Alderman Warner, Ben Akron, Bauman, and Winning are providing for the allocations of CATV franchise fund revenues for 2004 only. Alderman Warner. I thank your honor. I make a motion the general ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Moved and second ordinance be put upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, your honor, this change will affect the allocation of cable TV franchise fund revenues for 2004 only. Uh, these funds this, this is a one-time change in the ordinance that was agreed upon at our Strategic Fiscal Planning Committee as a help to our 2004 budget. Uh, in 2005, this will revert back to the original ordinance, which allows the use of cable TV funds for only certain uses, such as tax or incremental financing districts, development of industrial land, and for debt service requirements to the debt service fund for debt service requirements, and a general fund capital outlay. Appropriations. So this is a one-year change to help us get through this budget year. Next year, we'll revert back to its original ordinance. If there's no other discussion, would you call the roll? Montemayor? Aye. Moody? Aye. Perez? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Stephan? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Wangelman? Aye. Warner? Aye. Weninger? Aye. Bauman? Aye. Berg? Aye. Bonet? Aye. Doyle? Aye. Graf? No. Manny? Aye. It's 15 ayes, one no. Motion carried. 1739 will lie over. 1740 and 41 lies over. 1742 goes to Special Committee on Risk Management. Steve. 1743 is a communication from E. Galileo Jose, 715 North 14th Street, relative to the size of the font used in city publications. That will go to finance. 1744 is communication from Mark Mickelson relative to the need of supporting the Boys and Girls Club of Sheboygan County. Finance. 1745 is a resolution to authorize the transfer of funds to provide monies in the 2004 budget for the Parking Utility Fund and the Transit System Fund. Finance. 1746 is a resolution to authorize the transfer of funds in the 2004 budget for establishing capital outlay appropriations in the general fund. Lies over. 1747 is a resolution to authorize the transfer of funds in the 2004 budget for reinstatement of appropriations from Ashmi Local 1564 concessions. That'll lay over. 1748 is a resolution directing a public hearing to be held in connection with change in the text of the city's official zoning ordinance to delete the prohibition on signs mounted on a roof. That resolution can be put upon this passage. Alderman Manuel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, make a motion to put the resolution upon this passage. Second. Move to second. The resolution be put upon this passage under discussion. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. 1749 is an ordinance amending the text of the City of Sheboygan Zoning Ordinance in Section 15.8042C thereof, so as to delete the prohibition on signs mounted on a roof. That will go to Plan Commission. 1750 is a resolution granting permission to the Great Lakes Companies and Blue Harbor Resort Condominium LLC to commence early excavation and construction of the foundations for the 16 condominium buildings for the Blue Harbor Project. And that goes to Redevelopment Authority. No. Hang on. Uh, all of the Moody. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I decided to announce this tonight. The time has come for me to make a very difficult decision. I've decided not to run again for Alderman of the 6th District. I've served, I've served in this position for almost 14 consecutive years. I've met a lot of nice people, and I hope I've made a difference for the better of the city of Sheboygan. I've always been very pro-development, and that's why I got involved in politics in the first place. Back in 1984, my husband and I both lost our jobs at Hydraulic Tools Corporation when they closed and moved away. My husband had been there 19 years, and I was there 16 years. So my feelings toward the city were very bitter because it seemed like no one cared or wanted to make an effort to encourage our employer to stay here. My general feeling at the time was that if an employer wanted to move away, 
no one was going to try and encourage them to stay. After writing a letter to the editor of the press expressing my feelings about employers leaving the city, former Mayor Richard Schneider gave me a call and asked me to serve on a committee. I agreed and I found that there are ways to encourage employers to stay here and create new jobs. Community development block grant funding and TIF district financing are some of those ways. That encouraged me to run for alderman. Over those 14 years, I've seen the riverfront, lakefront, industrial park, downtown, and other business areas expand. It's a shame that some people can't see the potential job creation and spin-off development of Blue Harbor. Many jobs will be created at Blue Harbor and the surrounding areas. It will attract people from all walks of life, and local families will be able to enjoy the water park. This will also be a major boost to our tax base. The city budget has always been an issue, but this year has been truly the toughest so far. It will only get worse in the coming years, and services will have to be cut in order to keep a 0% or a low increase on the tax levy. I will do the best I can to serve the people of the 6th District until my term ends on April 12, 2004. I wish my successor the very best. I've decided to announce my intentions early enough so anyone who lives in the 6th District can throw their name in the ring and run for alderman. I think more people need to know what it's really like. Respectfully, Betty Moody. Thank you, Thank Betty. You. No. Thank you. Exactly. There you go. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to let the council know that we're tentatively planning on committee of the whole meeting for the 15th of December at 6 o'clock. Uh, if it doesn't work out within the next week, I'm working with Paulette to have an update on the Blue Harbor project for the council on where it stands. And also there is the one ethics uh, issue dealing with uh, lost and found items that we want to address at that time. <coughs> at this time, we're tentatively setting it for 6 o'clock on December 15th prior to the council meeting. Thank you. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank the council for your hard work and diligence of getting the budget put together and holding it at at our uh, minimal rate increase of nine tenths of a percent, thirteen point nine nine, I believe, Rich. Right? Yeah, he's shaking his head. Right. Did a very good job. We we're going to have another tough year ahead of us, but thank you for all your hard work and concessions. And to the non reps and department heads, thank you very much for all that hard work and effort you put into it. Without you, we couldn't have done it either in the concessions you gave. So thank you, everyone. Look forward to next year. Move well, this second adjourn under discussion. <laughs>